Yo, what's going on Epic 7? I'm Sue and this is my beginner's guide to Abyss Floor 118. Floor 118 will have you facing off against Remnant Violet as well as the regular version of Violet. Remnant Violet, his entire core mechanic here is based around his ultimate massacre. It is a single target attack that penetrates defense and also hits a target with unbuffable for two turns and ignores effect resistance. Now, I say it's based around this move because there is a lot of things that are going on with Massacre. There's a lot of ways that you could trigger it. It does a lot of beneficial things. For example here, this passive perfect combination says that every time that Remnant Violet uses his ultimate, it will heal him for the difference in HP between him and Green Violet. So for example, if Green Violet is at full HP and Remnant Violet is at 30% HP, when he uses his ultimate, he will immediately go back up to 100% HP. He will heal up that entire 70% of damage dealt to him. Now, if, for example, he uses his ultimate at, say, 75% HP, but Green Violet is at half health, well, then he doesn't gain any health back. Additionally here, he has this passive concentration. Every time you hit him, he gets faster and stronger. On top of that, if you hit him with a character that has no buffs on them, he will dodge. And if he dodges twice in a fight, he will use his ultimate, which then, as you could probably guess, heal him up for the difference between his health and Green Violet's health. Now, I know what you're thinking. Okay, well, we just killed Green Violet. Unfortunately, the other half of this perfect combination passive says that if you kill Violet, he goes berserk and therefore has a 100% chance to dodge everything for the rest of the fight, which means that every other attack results in a massacre for big damage, unbuffable. It's just not going to be a good time. Now, to make matters worse, he also has this passive here, Darkness Curtain, which gives disconnect to everyone on your team and it cannot be dispelled. It cannot be resisted. So what disconnect says is that characters can only buff themselves. So if you were hoping to get attack buff from a character like Tamarin, right, that is out the window. If you're hoping to rely on immunity from Adventurer Raz, that is out the window. You must play characters that buff themselves and ideally do not play AoE damage dealers because that can either one, kill Green Violet causing Berserk or two, cause Remnant Violet to dodge accidentally when say a character like Mercedes just doesn't have attack buff available. You will hit Remnant Violet that will cause a dodge that will make your team take a ton of extra damage and make the fight just take a lot longer. So please, only characters that can self-buff in this fight, only single target damage dealers in this fight. As for the first floor, it's super easy. It's against, the, against this guy here, the Elite Perlin Swordsman. He has this passive here that says at the start of the fight, he is invincible until you hit him with three fire element allies on your team. Once you do that, invincibility goes down, and then you rush him down and kill him very, very quickly before you have to deal with, like, the attack buff, the counter attack buff on all of his allies, the provoke locks, things like that. Just bring three fire allies, and he is a joke. Now, with all that in mind, it should be pretty obvious what the team I'm going to be playing here is. It's Adventure Raz, Tamarin, and Sermia, because all three of these characters self-buff, and it gives us the three fire allies that we need for the first floor. So let's go over each of them and talk about why we're playing them. Adventure Rise, you already know, best tank in all of Abyss. He has two buffs that uh, in his kit, Purifying Flame gives him increased defense, and Command Strike gives him immunity, and it also doubles as a dual attack with our primary damage dealer and a defense break. So overall, he just adds a ton of damage to our entire team, and he is guaranteed to always have a buff up at some point in order to deal with Remnant Violet. Arius is the artifact. Health percentage here on the necklace, health percentage of the ring, boots or speed. Effect this at over 85% in order to land the defense break from Command Strike. You already know her, you love her. The best healer for all of Abyss, Tamarin. Not really much has changed here, right? Wondrous Potion Vial here as the artifact. Health percentage necklace, health percentage ring, boots or speed. If you're wondering why Tamarin as opposed to some of the other healers that you could be playing here, right? Because idle mode doesn't give attack buff to everybody. Well, it does give it to herself here off of Song of the Forest, so she could at least buff herself, and then you could use the S1 here, dual attack, without any fear of Remnant Violet uh, dodging. So as long as you're playing Tamarin and doing the things that you've always done with her in Abyss, she should always have a buff and therefore contribute to the overall damage while keeping the team topped off. 
As for the primary damage dealer here, it's going to be Sermia. Freely available to everyone through the Expert Hunt Challenge. I do not think that there is a stronger damage dealer that you can play in this because you need to play a single target DPS and you need to bring one that can actually self buff. Commander Lorena is the strongest single target DPS in Abyss, but she has no self buffs. After that, it's Sermia, right? Sermia is pretty much your best option. She has greater attack buff on her S2, and based on whatever exclusive equipment you're using, you could also get a shield. She penetrates a bunch of defense in her kit, right? So overall, very, very good. As for what we're playing her on, Daydream Joker is the artifact. Playing with fire is the exclusive equipment because it just overall increases our damage when we use things like Command Strike from Roz. Critical hit damage necklace, attack percentage ring, and boots need to be speed. You need this character to actually have speed of around 175 or 180 or higher. If you play her at a lower speed, what will end up happening is that she'll have these long periods of time where you don't have hot streak available. You can't give her a greater attack buff, and therefore she cannot contribute meaningful damage to the actual fight. So she needs to be on speed buff or speed boots in order to actually cycle her turns and keep her buffs up full time. Otherwise, again, you'll have these really awkward windows where you just can't deal any damage. As for the last character, I have decided to go with Camilla, and that is because she has tactical maneuver here to give herself an attack buff. And remember, as long as she has an attack buff, Flashing Blade is just an extra copy of Raz's command strike. So the general strategy is going to be, essentially, as long as Sermia has greater attack buff, and either Raz has his S2 available with Soulburn, or Camilla has her S2 available, then we can basically maximize our damage and get a bunch of free Sermia attacks. As for the artifact here, Daydream Joker works fine. Boots are speed. Just make sure for your necklace and ring, they could be anything. Just make sure that the character is able to survive and has at least 85% effectiveness. For me, that is going to be a health percentage necklace and effectiveness on the ring. All right, now that you understand what we're doing here, what our strategy is, let's jump into the fight. All right. Now, at the start, he'll get this invincibility. And like we talked about, you have to hit him with three fire elemental heroes. So we'll kind of do that first. Camilla kind of speed RNG'd here, but we'll attack buff up. Hopefully we get a defense break here. That's one from Sermia. S1 is two from Tamarin. And then skill three here with Raz for the defense buff. That is going to be three. So now it's gone. And then you just proceed to rush the boss down. You can soul burn here with Roz. Basic here with Hammerin. Guaranteed duel with Sermia. And then basic attack with Sermia. Easy first floor. All right, and now we're here on Violet. We'll skill two here with Tamarin to top everybody off. All right, now I don't have buffs, so attacking Remnant Violet is bad, so we're going to skill three just for the souls. Now, I already have immunity here from the first floor. If I had the S3, I would go for it. Now, I can basic attack here, Remnant Violet, and I'll be fine, but I cannot Soul Burn because it'll pull Sarmia, who has no buffs. So we're just going to go for a basic attack here. Alright. And now, because she has Gab, we can start our offense. So we're going to go... Let's just go regular S3 here. We'll save our souls. All right, now Roz is blinded, which means I want to hit Violet. Because if I miss, that's going to suck. Okay, we could hit Violet here. And then Camilla can get her attack buff up and then pull Thermia. And then this will be our last attack that we could get in with Sermia. Pretty depressing damage window, if I'm being honest. So we have to go basic here. We in idle mode here. Get rid of all the debuffs. Have everybody recover up. Alright, 
All right, so we have to go here into green violet because if we go into remnant violet again, it'll pull Sermia, which is not good for us. And Sermia has to go here. Man, this blind is really, really messing me up here on Raz. I'm actually going to have him do this. So that way I don't have to worry about incurring any more debuffs. Ooh, has a strip on the violet. Did not actually know that. All right. So we go basic here. All right, now we have our skill two, so we could go in on Remnant Violet, finally. Full burn here. Man, this blind is really, really frustrating. So let's go skill three here. Because I don't want to pull a character that's blinded. That's really bad for us. Gonna give gab to everybody. I'm actually going to use S1 here to strip one of these gabs. It's probably best to strip Remnant Violet. We can basic attack Remnant Violet because we have attack buff still. Did attack here. If I must fight. All right, and then we go S3 here since we already have immunity, right? We don't have to worry about Violet dodging it. Green Violet here. All right, we have to go skill two here to heal up. And this blind is killing me. We can go basic attack here on Remnant Violet. I have to go here on Green Violet. Idle mode, that'll get everybody out of all this nonsense. And finally, it looks like we might have an actual real damage window on our hands. All right, so we go skill two here with Sermia. We could soul burn for damage. This will do about 10%. And then we could soul burn here on Roz. All right, and then attack buff here on Camilla. And again, because we have Gab here on Sermia, we don't have to worry about this. Just have to sit here and pick our battles. So we go, Cameron has it, and so does Sermia. So we could safely go into Remnant Violet. Soul burn here. And then this is our last attack on Sermia. Alright, so now we have to try to get Violet to be as low a health as possible so Remnant Violet doesn't recover. Alright. Heal everybody back up. Let's strip the greater attack buff off of Remnant Violet. Let's pull Sermia here. Back here. We go here. We could go S3 here for the defense buff because he already has immunity, so Remnant Violet won't dodge. Oof, big damage here coming out on Sermia. That's not good. All right, so we could go go one here. This unbuffable has to be kind of in a chokehold, so we have to go after green violet. We could go skill two here. We can get rid of gab here off of green violet. Oh, we missed. Back green violet here. Green violet's getting kind of low here. All right, idle mode should give us uh, the fuel that we need to get through this. All right, so we see our push up here. 
All right, now we have our buffs. We can soul burn here. And we're just going to rush down Remnant of Violet at this point. We could soul burn here. Finally get our attack buff here on Camilla. Pull Sermia. Guaranteed duel on Sermia. All right, pull Sermia again with our soul burn. And there you go. Abyss floor 118 in a nutshell. So this is what I was talking about at the beginning. Sermia needs those speed boots because you need her to cycle. You kind of have to pick and choose your windows. You saw I got some bad RNG there. Just be patient. When in doubt, attack green violet. And just, again, wait for your window, right? Don't force it. If you have unbuffable, blind, don't force it. Just be patient. Sometimes RNG will be pretty unkind to you. I will make this floor seem harder than it actually is, but just stick to it and hopefully it should be pretty easy. If you have any more questions, feel free to ask them down in the comment section below. As always, enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of your week, and I'll catch you in the next one. Later now.